हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस स्टडी अबाउट स्ट्रेच रिफ्लेक्स एंड इनवर्स स्ट्रेच रिफ्लेक्स स्ट्रेच रिफ्लेक्स इज योर मोनोसिनेप्टिक रिफ्लेक्स व्हाट इज द रिसेप्टर फॉर दैट द मसल स्पिंडल्स मसल स्पिंडल्स आर द रिसेप्टर्स फॉर द स्ट्रेच रिफ्लेक्स सो हियर इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ नी जर्क व्हेन यू गिव अ परकर्शन हैमर और रिफ्लेक्स हैमर व्हेन यू टैप दैट पटेलर टेंडन what is it is going to do it is going to stretch the muscle stretching of the muscle is going to stimulate the stretch receptors who are the muscle spindles and via 1a fibers the impulses are going to go to the center and that center is your spinal cord they go and synapse directly onto the alpha motor neuron and this alpha motor neuron is going to cause the contraction contraction of the extensor so contraction of the extensor is going to cause the extension of your limb so this is an example of simple stretch reflex here is an inverse stretch reflex what do i mean by inverse stretch reflex so when you increase the tension whenever the tension is increased in the tendon organ so what would happen so if you take a biceps what happens suppose uh this is you know a person's biceps here are the biceps muscles okay and this person is asked to hold a load so you have given a load of 10 kg right so when you gave the load of 10 kg there was a stretching of the muscle and so there was contraction of the muscles and hence you were able to hold this 10 kg then what did you do you put another 10 kg if this person's muscle power is not that strong enough to hold 20 kg on hand what will happen he is definitely going to relax his hand and these weights are going to fall down now what is the uh, whole of these mechanism for this the mechanism is this were the biceps muscle okay and there were muscle spindles present inside the muscle belly but here in the tendon parts were present your golgi tendon organs now these golgi tendon organs they are being carried by one b fiber they go to the spinal cord they go on and they kind of uh, synapse on to a inhibitory interneuron this is glycinergic inhibitory interneuron because this releases glycine as an inhibitory interneuro uh, neurotransmitter and this in turn is going to go on to the alpha motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron is now no is going to reduce the impulses and so you will have relaxation so this response of the muscle to increased muscle tension is called as inverse stretch reflex the one that we are seeing here is actually a mixture of both the stretch reflex as well as the inverse stretch reflex right so uh, now what do i do is i'll uh, try to explain what is there in this uh, diagram what it shows that when there is an increased tension this increased tension is going to stimulate my golgi tendon organs as i have shown for biceps muscle here we are seeing for the legs muscle for the uh, lower limb so these uh, golgi tendon organs they are going to send the impulses via the afferent fibers that is 1b fibers these 1b fibers since this is coming from the tendon this is a conscious proprioception this conscious proprioception is sent via the dorsal column tract to the cortex plus some of the neurons are going to go and they are going to synapse on to the inhibitory interneuron this inhibitory interneuron you know so in turn you will have the inhibition of the motor neurons and these motor neurons once inhibited they are going to cause the relaxation of the muscles so there may be a relaxation of the quadriceps muscle the effector muscle that you may find that with increased tension there is relaxation of muscle what happens to the antagonist muscles the antagonist muscle may be innervated by an excitatory interneuron which in turn is going to excite the antagonist muscle and the antagonist muscles so 
since this hamstring muscle is the antagonist muscle to my quadriceps, they are going to get excited and there may be contraction of these antagonist muscles. Okay, to be very, uh, if you want to understand purely an inverse stretch reflex, this reflex pathway explains it much better. Here you may find the dual role of these uh, impulses which are coming from the Golgi tendon organ. One, which is going to cause the contraction of the antagonist muscle, the effector that is a quadricep muscle and it is also going to inhibit the antagonist muscle. So it can be also an example of reciprocal inhibition. Okay, so this can be an example of reciprocal inhibition where you, are, you actually are causing the contraction of one group of muscle and relaxation of another group of muscle. Okay, probably we are going to learn about reciprocal inhibition also later. But two functions which are actually served by reciprocal inhibition is that it facilitates my rapid movement. Although it is not with uh, in term of invert stretch reflex, but we are talking of uh, reciprocal innervation. So we'll talk about it later. Okay, leave it. But here, if you want to understand the inverse stretch, I think this will be a better way to understand in a pure form of inverse stretch reflex where we are not involving an antagonist group of muscles. Now, what is the difference between a stretch reflex and an inverse stretch reflex? You might have to just think for a moment. What are the differences? I hope you have already thought about it. Now, let us go and think them these reflexes as a reflex arc. Okay. What is the receptor for my stretch reflex? I hope you remember, Ankit, that what we have learned about the stretch reflex, the receptor is my muscle spindle. For inverse stretch reflex, the receptor is by Golgi tendon organ. Okay, so this is a stretchoreceptor or the mechanoreceptor which is going to respond to stretch. Golgi tendon organ is my tensoreceptor or you can say tension receiving receptors means who are going to be stimulated when, once there is a tension in the tendon. What about the afferent fibers? For stretch reflex, it is 1A fiber. For inverse stretch reflex, it is 1B fiber. How about the function? The muscle spindles or stretch reflex, they are involved in the maintenance of the muscle tone and they are able to, my muscle spindles are able to sense the stretch and the rate of change of stretch. Whereas in inverse stretch reflex, these Golgi tendon organs, they are going to sense the tension in the tendons. And they are important to protect the muscle from overstretching. Stretch reflex, since it involves 1A directly going on to alpha motor neuron, it is a monosynaptic reflex. But for inverse stretch reflex, we have seen that these Golgi tendon organ 1B fibers, they are going to synapse on to another uh, inhibitory interneuron, which are glycinergic. Please just remember that these are glycinergic inhibitory interneurons who are going to release glycine. So glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which in turn is going to inhibit the alpha motor neuron. And so the muscle, instead of contraction, will, will have relaxation. 